Sada from Lucid Pixel. I hope you enjoyed the new intro. Now, one of the reasons I decided to create a new intro was because a few months ago, Lucid Pixel actually celebrated its first year anniversary. And I walked into, when I launched, when I first launched Lucid Pixel, I walked in with zero expectations, but high hopes, of course, um, but didn't realize that a year later, only a year later, uh, we would have already seen over 70 students from over 20 countries around the world. Now that's a big deal because remember this is a, a, an exclusively private mentorship. It is private, one-on-one, -on -one. that's it. There's no classes, there's no small groups. In fact, that was the very premise behind starting LucidPixel in the first place, to make it private. So uh, that really reaffirmed a very strong belief that I had, and I continue to have to this day, a belief that I've had for many years as a teacher, because I, I've been teaching for over seven, eight years, something like that, or at least teaching seven, eight years before I started LucidPixel in colleges, right? And um, I had a very, very strong belief on the people I worked with, on the students, and on education and how I felt about it. I very quickly learned when I became a teacher for the first time, that this was my true calling. This, this was something that I was as passionate about as I am about art. It's not just producing art, but teaching. It's something that I absolutely love doing. And it's something that I take extremely seriously. And so do the colleagues that I've worked with at the college that I teach at. These teachers are some of the most selfless, talented, generous people I've ever known in my entire life. They are kind, they are approachable, they're wonderful, wonderful people. They go beyond the call of duty with every single student that they meet. Yet, they're still dealing with certain limitations that the system imposes on them. Limitations which I aimed to solve starting LucidPixel in the first place. So what I wanted to share with you today were two things. The first, in the first part, I want to tell you exactly why it is that I started LucidPixel so you can understand and I can drive home just how much you have to benefit from the current state of education if you, well, if you give it a little thought, to be honest with you, okay? Because one of the things that I really want to drive home with you today is the fact that you have choices. You are empowered today in ways that I never was. You have, you have the ability to customize your education in ways today that just simply didn't exist and you can do so in the most accessible way possible. So let me, let me explain what I'm talking about. The first thing that should jump out at, the first thing that jumps out at anybody when it comes to lifelong commitments is the cost that comes with it. Buying a car, buying a home, renting a home, uh, you know, major renovations, a hospital bill, whatever the case might be. These major life altering things usually come at the most the most demanding cost and education is right up there at the top of them in most places around the world with a few odd exceptions like in certain countries where education is actually free i personally think that all countries should be following that that template okay but in most cases education costs tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars if not more some of them can rack up ridiculous bills and my question to that my strong candid opinion of this is why why does this exist now again i'm going to talk to you the same way i talk to my family and friends i'm not going to talk to you like i'm trying to be politically correct on my youtube channel i'm going to tell you how i really think and what i really feel why the hell should a student a student which is by the way the the the, the which is a euphemism for broke no money <laughs> no money or little money Unless you're one of my students who is a, were a professional programmer, a successful programmer who decided to become an artist who did extremely well, to my great jealousy. But why are we charging these people? And when I'm talking about these people, I'm not just talking about young kids. I'm my, at Lucid Pixel, I've taught students everywhere from, from 13 to 75 years old. We're all in the same boat together. Age is just a number, okay? We're all looking to make a living at some point in our life. Why the hell would we charge these people ridiculous amounts of money that they clearly can't afford? Why? So they can be, so they can be shackled with debt for the rest of their life? Now, you know, I've expressed myself in the past about this. It's completely ridiculous. 
for those who need it the most, for those who are about to make the greatest contribution, contribution to society, we should be charging them little to nothing, minimal cost. And where is this money going anyways? Where are these hundreds of thousands of dollars going? Into the infrastructure of the schools? For real? Schools are crumbling, black mold, roofs falling down on kids' heads. So it's definitely not going into the infrastructure. Is it going into teachers' pockets? Dude, teachers make some of the crappiest salaries on earth, okay? Yet, they're the people who work the longest hours, contribute the most to people, and have the greatest contribution to the future economy, yet they make the shittiest salaries. And I'm talking shitty salaries. Sometimes it's almost not even good enough to make a minimal living. It doesn't make any sense to me. So somebody, somebody up there is making a shit ton of money off of your back, okay? And yeah, I'm being candid with you. I'm being very, I'm pointing a lot and looking, looking straight at you, okay? I'm not bullshitting you here. I'm telling you exactly how I feel from the perspective of a teacher and a student, okay? The next problem is, is and this deals especially with art, is that every artist you meet is different. We all have extremely unique strengths and extremely unique weaknesses. And as a teacher at my online school, one of the number one reasons I started Lucid Pixel in the first place was because teaching in a large classroom environment minimizes or completely eliminates the ability to personalize anything. I mean, you can't personalize an education for 60 students in the space of three hours. It's not going to happen, right? And even if you want to give personalized help to students, they have to stay after class. You end up staying there for three, four hours, and they get two, three minutes of your time at most. That doesn't work. That, that burns everybody out. So what does it force you to do? Well, uh, shape up or, you know, shit or get off the pot, right? Lead follower, get out of the way. If you're going to, if you work hard, you might make it. If you don't, good luck. And me, to me, that answer does not cut it. I'm sorry, that doesn't cut it. When you're paying $80,000 a year, you're getting an education exactly the way you want it, with a cherry on top. You're not going to get some, you know, you're, you're not going to get some, eh, do your best, oh, another dropout, oh, well, whatever shit happens. I'm sorry, no, no, I'm sorry, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. All right? So, personalization. Every student I meet, and I'm talking one-on-one, -on -one, okay? One-on-one, -on -one, two hours a week with every student is just enough time for to cover this coursework and then have enough time to talk and chat and get to know the, each other personally, get to know the desires, the direction, how to customize the things, how to market themselves, how to, you know, how to communicate, how to, how to negotiate salaries, all of the stuff that comes with, with working professionally. You actually get some, there's somebody there who can answer any question you want at any point in time, okay? The next is, variety of choice. Now, Lucid Pixel is one mentorship among many that are starting to pop up all over the place. And in my opinion is the more the better. Because as an artist, for me as an artist, I have a very specific set of strengths and skills that I apply towards a very specific career or a specific set of careers, be it in video games or fantasy art. Okay? But it's these are skills that are a part of who I am. They are a part of my DNA. They are my passion. They're my life. This, these are things that I, I follow every day, that I go to sleep and I watch YouTube on, on when I'm going to, you can ask my wife, I watch YouTube when I'm going to bed and I watch painting tutorials while she's curled up sleeping. I'm sitting there watching a painting as I doze off to sleep. This is my life, okay? And, um, I have a very specific direction I want to go with my career. Why would I throw my... I mean, I did because I had no other choice, but why would I today, with the choices that I have to be able to, if I want to learn some, if I want to learn how to do, you know, intricate, detailed worlds that I feel I can live in, I can take a course with Tyler Edlin. If I want to do these grandiose, colorful splashes of scenery, I go with Noah Bradley. If I want to get into mood painting and color and ambiance and atmosphere, I go with... Noah, I go with uh, Nathan Fox. If I want to learn creature design, I go with, with uh, Bobby Chu. If I want to do really cool design rendering, I go with Anthony Jones. I mean, the frick, I've got the world at my, at my fingertips right now. I can customize my education to suit my particular personality and my particular tastes. Furthermore, I can get to know on a semi-personal level who it is I'm going to be taking courses with. 
this video I'm sharing with you right now isn't just me sharing my opinion. You're getting to know who I am and how I think. And you're starting to think, ooh, this guy's a little bit eccentric. <laughs> no, I'm not. Don't worry. Or maybe I am. But I digress. Okay? You get, you're getting to know who I am. Yet, in a school system, you pay you know, $150,000 and here's the teachers you're going to get. You're going to win some, you're going to lose some. Some are going to suck, some are going to be okay, some are going to be great. But who knows? It's a roll of the dice, right? And lastly is a bloated curriculum. We as human beings only have a certain amount of energy per day. And if you know anything about how the human brain and body works, it is at its most productive when it has its highest level of energy at the right time, right? When I go to the gym, for instance, I know that if I go first thing in the morning, I'm not going to have, I'm going to have about 65% of the strength I'll have if I go at one o'clock in the afternoon. Furthermore, I know my own limits. I know there's a certain point where my body ceases to benefit from the training. My body just doesn't have the energy to focus and, and strengthen itself. At a certain point, I start making myself self, self susceptible to injury. Well, your brain is a muscle. Hello? Yet, we, we overwhelm and bombard students with a curriculum where 75% of it is absolute garbage. And, and a couple of it is, is a couple of the subjects they take is completely irrelevant. Why would I force my students to take language classes when they spent, you know, $150,000 to take an art course? Somebody explain to me why? They've already done elementary and high school language. Why are they being forced to learn that in college and university when they, they're paying for a specific education? What kind of politics are at play here, right? <laughs> There's a lot of politics at play here. And I... And what happens is, I would pride myself in the fact that I get up at 5.30 in the morning and, and I get my coffee thermos and I walk with my coffee. You know, I'm going to take a sip of coffee here. Mm. C'est bon. You know, I walk with my coffee thing and I'm doing my iPhone and I'm taking the, I take the train to work or the bus to work or whatever and I get into the classroom and I'm partially awake when I walk into the school and I go in and I turn on the lights to the classroom and there's three students already sitting there. They never left. Why? Because they were all like doing a language course. And I'm sitting there going, they're burning themselves out on language when their career isn't going, they're not going to be linguists. Yeah, okay, guys, speaking well is important and, you know, but to the point where it's going to burn them, burn them out and to the point where if they fail that class, they don't, they don't pass their art course. What kind of politics is that? That's nonsense. No, you pick exactly what you want when you want it. One of the major factors of learning that I've learned and when I was in high school, I hated high school. I hated it. <laughs> it was to me, it was a prison sentence, and it pretty much is a prison sentence because most schools look like prisons. I didn't know how to learn until I was in my mid thirties. That's when I really started to learn, and I also learned how to love learning. I hated history. <gasps> Oh my God, did I hate history. I failed history two years in a row because my brain refused to retain dates and numbers. Yet, you can't, you can't pry my fingers off of a docu historical documentary on Egypt or, you know, or, or, or Mexico or North America or South America, except for Canada. Canada, Canada history sucks. Yeah, in most cases it sucks. Fur trade, ugh, well, yuck. Eh, that's what I had to learn when I was in school. Okay. Um, it's it's just bloated and and furthermore you're you don't have a desire to learn it the best time to learn something is when you need it you create an obstacle for yourself you create a project and when you get to that point where you know you can get to the next level but there's this little ah, you can't quite you can't quite figure out how to take it to the next level and solve this problem that's when you that's when you look for for furthering your education when you know that you just can't get past that obstacle and once you, when you really have a desire, all you need is a little seed of information. And boom, it, it blossoms into something huge. But when you try to force feed people cabbage soup every single day, when they don't want cabbage soup, they just regurgitate it. And the moment, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know if your experience was anything like mine, but the moment you finished, you passed your whatever course you couldn't stand and you got that C and you're like, oh, thank God I don't have to do this over again. What happened? Within 15 seconds, all of that information went and dissipated. It was gone immediately. Why? Because it didn't want to be there in the first place. It was just occupying too much space.
okay now i'm not talking about high school and elementary school you need those core skills in math and education after that leave kids alone let them learn in the direction that they're passionate about when they need it all right now these are some of the things that schools don't teach you things that i as a teacher and a lot of these online schools do teach now there are teachers that teach this as well as they can under the circumstances in traditional schools but this is something that I feel much more time and attention needs to be focused on number one you need to learn how to love learning I didn't know how to learn I had no idea I hated learning to me or at least learning to me was forced upon me I was forced fed you know he's either smart or he's not why because I was forced to learn art in the same type of environment in, in a learning environment in a learning system that's actually more designed for engineers you know an educational system that was designed to help push the economic engine of the industrial era right throw in a bunch of students into this fast food machine process them spit them out the other end and keep working on building new machines right like like matrix you know machines that build themselves now they're not teaching people how to love learning and what later on in my life when people finally started to leave me alone all of a sudden my brain naturally stood the law of attraction started to work and all of a sudden I started to find myself gravitating towards subjects that I was passionate about and when I started to develop a very strong sense of self and where I wanted to go and the direction I wanted to go in my career all of a sudden I couldn't get enough I'm constantly constantly learning new things always I, I would I would my heart would stop if I if I stopped learning quite frankly I need it it's my fuel every single day it's my greatest joy is learning but trust me I wasn't your prize student back in high school <laughs> I wasn't at all I was a pretty shitty student back in high school but man do I love learning now man can I teach now uh, isn't that ironic a person who hated school when he was in high school turned out to be a teacher hmm I wonder why all right the next thing is in traditional schools you don't get a chance to know the student personally like I said every student is unique every student has their own unique style and your number one job your number one role as a teacher especially in a personalized environment is to get to know your student extremely well that's one of the most important things I cannot teach effectively unless my student teaches me how to teach them they're the ones telling me what they truly want I remember watching a TED talk once where somebody was he was talking about the art of helping other people how do we what is the one thing that people do wrong when it comes to helping other civilizations like somebody going as a peacekeeping uh, you know a, a peace mission or something like that overseas and they go to somewhere in, in Africa for instance to help a poor a poor community and help them overcome certain obstacles like no clean water and what do they do they walk into this community and they say these people definitely need clean water let's get them clean water and then they give them everybody they give everybody clean water and they go no you have clean water and everybody goes oh thank you and they're like wow these people are ungrateful why are they ungrateful it's because maybe they were perfectly fine without clean water in the first place people assume and a normal typical modern day belief is we're gonna come in and we're gonna rescue you we're gonna tell you what you need bullshit people are gonna tell you what they need I'm perfectly comfortable living without electricity in my house I don't need electricity what I need is bananas I need dried prunes I don't need electricity I just need prunes because that I need that to do this because this is the big op, this biggest obstacle that I'm dealing with right now in my life but if you don't listen if you don't get to know that person and they don't tell you what it is that they need you can't you aren't you aren't actually helping them you're just giving them what you think they need and that's what educational systems do all the time they're forced into a position of, of creating of delivering to students what they think students need without ever ever actually listening to them once okay and that's what a private mentorship is think about the word private mentorship think about the people that we studied when we were back in school who do we study we study Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo and John Singer Sargent and Bouguereau and Seurat and Degas and Rembrandt and and you know and Klimt and all of these artists we learn about these artists and call them masters and say the world will never see art that masterful anymore and my opinion is why the hell not why the hell can't you be 10 times better than Rembrandt why 
because somebody said you're that this is this is that's it that's the pinnacle of greatness that we're ever going to achieve why have people given up on mastery why haven't why have people given up on the idea that we're ever going to be as good as the old masters well one thing that might very well contribute to it is the fact that there's nothing special about us anymore we're all just carbon copies of each other we're all a class of artists that graduated the graduates of 1996 yay okay no you have genius in you the reason you're an artist in the first place is because your brain works differently than everybody else and your brain doesn't only work differently from everybody else it works differently from every other artist and a teacher a real teacher a real mentor is somebody who needs to get to know who you are and furthermore help find that sneaky path using your skills to get you into the market to get you noticed to, to help you make a living using your unique blend of skills and if there are any very important very crucial skills that you're missing to help bring those out to help create a nice balanced artist so you aren't living with a too much of a too much of a handicap for the rest of your career which many people do okay the next thing that schools don't teach you is how to market yourself how can you market yourself when you have no idea who you are you know Look at all these artists out there that have a very strong brand. Look at Anthony Jones. Look at Bobby Chu. Look at Noah Bradley. Look at Tyler Edlin. Look at all of these artists. They have a very strong brand. The brand is them. It's their style. Where do, you teach, where do schools teach students how to achieve that? Now, one of the number one things that students, that, that, that ambitious learners are always looking for is how do I find my style? Well, first is learning who the hell you are first. And in order to do that, you need to A, be extremely honest with yourself and B, be around somebody who's looking for it and recognizing it and furthermore, helping you learn how to use that to make a living with it, right? The next is connecting art to the way you live. Your particular lifestyle contributes to the type of art that you're going to create. And very often we create a disconnect between who we are in real life and who we are as artists. Learning to bridge that gap between those two things is crucial to us finding our style, finding our voice, finding our brand, making a name for ourselves. right? Yet in schools, we are always compared to other people. We're growing up in an environment of, you know, dog eat dog. Overcome, your op overcome the competition. You have to be that diamond in the rough that survives through this this blizzard of talent out there and be the one that shines and my opinion to that is bullshit what you're trying to learn is how to find your unique voice and how you can connect with others with it not learn how to be better than everybody else but learn how to connect because when you grow up in a world where you think that you have to be a diamond in the rough a lone ranger what you end up being is alone what you end up being is somebody who has to do everything on their own with no support from anybody. And that is a very discouraging and very unproductive and generally unsuccessful way of going about life. You need fellow artists. The more talent in your surroundings, the more you go on to sites like ArtStation or DeviantArt or any of these sites and see thousands and thousands of talented artists, what should be going on in your brain is there is an endless well of inspiration and support out there waiting for me not oh crap i'm never going to be able to overcome them when you find out who you are and you connect your art to who you are in real life your voice starts to come out once you start to connect it with your own personal voice you start to find like-minded individuals that share your same beliefs and those those are the people that you need in your life to help you push your art career forward okay the last thing is once you graduate from a traditional school, that's it. You're on your own. There's no support group. There's no, you know, AA for artists helping you overcome the inability to get a job. That's it. You get a piece of paper. You did a great job. You, shot, you, you shake hands with the professor with your diploma and your stupid gown on, and, you, and you're, you're sent off on your own with nothing. That's it. And you know what? That's not enough. There's nobody there to follow up with you afterwards. There's nobody who has any idea where you're going to go with your, where you're planning on going with your career. What do schools very often do? They show off and exploit the few gifted students that managed to fool the system. 
or manage to have enough marketing sense at that young age to be able to package themselves well because they were maybe a little bit better at drawing than everybody else or they had a style of artwork that was more catchy. But schools go, look what we can do. Look what we can, we produce students like this. No, 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 stop bullshitting people. You produce three students like this out of a classroom of 120. So stop trying to bullshit people, okay? If you really want to help students, if you really want to help students, it's not about, it's not about soliciting the teacher. It's about soliciting the student. It's about helping them reach their goals. It's about helping them shine and not making yourself shine. And that requires you to be there, to continue to be for somebody after they graduate. All of my students after they graduate, you don't know how many emails I get every day. You know, it can be overwhelming at a certain point. Sometimes it takes me three days to get back to people. But I get back to every single one of my students because education doesn't stop after the end of two months. The education continues because that's when they start to do their own thing. That's when big questions, that's when they actually start getting calls from clients because their actual education actually got them a call from a, from a director. They might actually start making a salary from, the, from, from what they've learned. Okay. And that requires me to continue to be there for people after they graduate. A school is never going to do that for you. Maybe for the odd student that, you know, might bring the school some money later on, I don't know. But that just doesn't happen. Once they're gone, they're gone. They come back, they visit the, stu the school about 10 years later and hug their old teachers because they love their teachers. And that's the end of it. You're basically on your own at that point. So now that I've shared with you my very candid, very strong, very hopefully not too passionate opinion about, about the education system, what I want to share with you now is a few little tips for your education and furthermore, things that I've learned from my students that can help you shine. Number one, everybody struggles. Everybody has good days and bad days. Everybody has hard times. But you, you should never underestimate the power of a positive attitude. The students that walk into a challenge with a smile on their face and saying, I'm going to do this. I know I suck. I suck, man. I suck, but I'm not going to suck in two weeks. You know, kind of like Jerry Maguire, you know, he's always proud. He knows who he is, right? You walk into, when you walk into a, when you walk into a challenge, be it professionally or be it educationally, when you walk into a challenge with your head up going, I'm, I'm not going to suck in two weeks. Watch me. All right. And walking with a positive attitude, you'd be amazed what that does. Because what it does is it teaches you that the amount of energy that you have to accomplish the goals that you're looking to accomplish is entirely up here. You create the amount of energy that you have to spend on your learning, on your growth artistically. And if you walk into that going, here goes nothing, then you know how much energy you have? You have about five minutes worth and it's going to be, it's going to fizzle up like that. And that's it. You're not going to go anywhere with that. But if you walk in there with a positive attitude, if you walk in there with an attitude like, no, we're going to, I'm going to be up all up on this biatch, you know what I'm saying? Then you're, that's exactly what's going to happen. And two weeks into your learning, when you say, oof, God, I've been doing this for two weeks. I'm so tired. That's, you're just tired because your brain, you're telling yourself you're tired. Stop telling yourself you're tired. You're not. Go, keep going. Go, no, no, I've got enough to go another month. I'm perfectly good. Okay. Okay. Maybe I need to take a day off and rest and, you know. You know, me and my lover, we're going to have massage day and, and have a pina colada, but then I'm back in on it, right? A positive attitude takes you a long way. And every student that I've ever known that came in, it doesn't mean you have to be an, an outgoing. You can be an introvert and still have a very positive attitude, okay? I'm not talking about people who are loudmouthed and ha-ha and meh, meh. No, you can be a very quiet part person. But if you know, if you, if you have compassion for yourself, you say, no, I am going to succeed. I know I'm serious about this. I know I'm going to get somewhere then you will. And you'd be amazed how much easier it makes life. Number two, eagerness and enthusiasm. Okay. Now, again, I'm not talking eagerness and enthusiasm. Those words that they used to throw at you in high school, you know, like those very poorly illustrated books on optimism and enthusiasm. Why do they even talk like that? I think they're just trying to patronize people. It's I hated those books. And being a cartoonist, of course, I used to look at these and go, who the hell illustrates this garbage? I can draw better than this and I'm freaking eight. You know, that's what I used to think. I'm not talking about that kind of enthusiasm and eagerness. I'm talking about the fact that, hey, you know what? You're investing in yourself, man. You're going to be going somewhere. You have a hell of a career ahead of you. Enjoy it. Actually enjoy what you're doing. 
put your heart into it. If if you need to laugh to produce good art because comedy is what you're about, then laugh. If you totally get get inspired by blood and gore, then go for it and make it gross. You know, study Walking Dead, study these different films, study prosthetics. Look up Gary Sepulveda's work. You know, see how he creates festering sores on the face and stuff like that. Have fun. Be enthusiastic. Get into what you're doing. Okay. Number three is really try. That always resonates with other people. Okay. Now, you might be you might be eight years old. You might have been doing this for sixty five years and you still feel like you suck. Okay. But try always try to do your best because when other people recognize your effort okay when other people recognize your effort they empathize with that and when they empathize with that they're willing to go to the ends of the world world to help you reach your goal but if your attitude's about it just, pff, whatever then people are going to look at that and go you didn't even try why should i put my energy into it to help you reach the next level when you don't even you don't even care this shows me you don't even care. You put five minutes into it. And you, you don't, it's not like you're working six jobs, dude. You can handle this. But you didn't even try. And I'm sorry. I'm going to say it like it is. Your teachers are human beings. They actually really care that you learn something. Trust me. We really care that you learn something. We really care to see you grow. Because when you don't grow, it's a personal frustration to a student. To... to see you not get where you want to get but when they see you're really trying they will try with you they will put in the extra time they'll put in the extra hours they'll put in the extra effort they'll explain it 15 more times so that it sinks in so show that it matters show that you care make the effort even if you only have six hours make those six hours count okay last but not least something one of the things that i found really really impresses me with students and really impresses me with artists that i've directed in the past are people that make a point on focusing on the qualities of others. This is something that teachers do by default. It's their job to look for the qualities of others. It's the, that's their mandate, right? But when a student goes out of the way to recognize the qualities of other students or recognize the qualities of their teachers or recognize the qualities of, of other mentorships that they've taken or other schools that they've been a part of, it shows that they're, they, they understand the value of connecting with other people when you spend your entire life only focused on this focused on your own abilities your own strengths and your own weaknesses and instead of seeing yourself as a part of everything you see uh, part of everything else you see yourself as a comparison to everything else you start to alienate yourself from what it is you need the most to grow but when you go out of your way to you know when you go out of your way to to say, wow, that artist is, I love the way that artist does that. I, I, I want to let that person know how they feel. Sometimes you'll tell people that you like them, you know, you like their work and they go, oh, thanks, whatever. You know, throw that into the pile of compliments. Some people will really show authentic care and throw a, a authentic warmth for what you've done. And I've reached out to artists that are right at the very top of celebrity as far as art is concerned in this world that we live in right now and got immediate warm full responses from them the bigger somebody is very often the less compliments they get because people go oh i'm just another fan you're not just another fan what you say matters and the fact that you're actually going out of your way to recognize the qualities of other people is showing them that you have a heart it's showing them that you're somebody you're a person you're not just another you're not just another digit you're not just another number you're an actual human being with feelings and that you feel like you've made an authentic connection with the other person. They feel heard. They feel cared for. And people like that are a lot easier to connect with. These are the things that my students teach me on a daily basis. All right? Among many, many other things. Okay? Oh, yeah. One little bonus thing. Students that I find grow the fastest are the ones that know their strengths. They recognize their strengths. Maybe they're a strong in visual storytelling or they're very good at rendering or they're very good at light or they're very good at posing or they're very good at atmosphere and 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 spatial awareness different artists every artist has a different strength but they also recognize their weakness so what they do is 
They put energy into strengthening their weaknesses that they need to achieve the goals that they're trying to achieve depending on the type of career they're looking for. They're not wasting energy building every random skill they can think of. Very specific group of skills they need to reach that next level in their particular style of art. But they also know and never take for granted the skills that they naturally have. This is one of the things that artists always do. They take for granted what they're naturally good at and they only think they're doing anything of value when they're doing something that's difficult, right? And that's a stupid opinion to have. This is something that I used to think. I used to think, oh, if I'm ever going to be a great artist, I'm going to have to be able to do that. And I realized at a certain point, why is that even relevant to, who, to the type of art that I like to produce? I spend my, all of my time and passion, I spend loving this and doing this. And it comes so naturally out of me and everybody recognizes it and loves it. Yet, in the back of my brain, I keep thinking that I have to be, do this if I'm, if I'm going to be an artist of any kind of worth. And that's nonsense. No, exploit your strengths as far as you can. I'm good at this. I'm good at doing creepy creature designs. I'm going to draw them till I'm blue in the face. And I don't need to tell you who I'm re making reference to, right? Exploit those. But on your off time, strengthen your weaknesses, okay? I have my own strengths and my own weaknesses. My strengths I exploit, my weaknesses I let go. And students, uh, and my weaknesses I work on. And my students who recognize their strengths and work on their weaknesses never waste any energy and find super nitro boost growth in their in their work because they're putting it exactly where it counts all right so you've been extremely patient i love you to pieces for for tolerating me for 40 minutes damn that's something if you made it across the finish line then that one's for you all right um, remember, of course, I've been yapping about it for the last for the last forty minutes. But remember, if you're interested in joining Lucid Pixel Private Mentorship, do so because it's the one that suits you. Otherwise, I've mentioned a lot of other ones during the video, so go and check those ones out as well. Okay, um, make sure you're picking the right mentorship for you because I'm not going to teach you very. I'm not going to be a good teacher to you if I don't get your style. If I've never practiced your style, so make sure that my style fits your style too. Every artist is made differently, so make sure that it's the right fit for you, okay? But if you are interested, check out the description below. All the info is there, and you can go to this website, this website right here, okay? And click on the Mentorship tab, and you'll be able to uh, get all the information and availabilities and all that kind of cool stuff as well, all right? And uh, if you liked this video, then it would be a huge help if you like, and of course, you can, you're welcome to subscribe as well, because I put out videos all the time, all right? So... Uh, Thank you again for joining me and take care. Bye-bye.